Welcome back to Tefl Tuesdays, hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Today we're looking at PowerPoint again, but this time we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I've put together a selection of interactive slides that you can copy and paste into your own PowerPoints. As I've said before, most classrooms these days have a computer and the screen and PowerPoints are a great teaching tool. They're also great for games and there's plenty out there to be picked up on the internet. If you're living in China, I highly recommend that you join the Tefl Lemon WeChat group by scanning this QR code on your phone and getting in touch with Stuart over at Tefl Lemon. I picked up most of these slides from the Tefl Lemon WeChat group and they even have their own YouTube channel now. So just type Tefl Lemon into the search bar and you'll find them. And while I've got you here, consider subscribing to this channel. So today's package is a bit of a mixed bag, but extremely useful in different scenarios. As always, a link to the download will be in the description down below. And don't forget to click enable content if the box appears. The first slide in this package is a great warmer and great for reviewing colors. It's called Where is Billy? And it's a bit Halloween themed, but you can use it any time of the year. So the first slide is an introduction. And it says Billy is lost in a haunted house and we need to find him because he is very scared. Where is Billy? When we click to the next screen, we see colored doors and if you click a door, it disappears. The aim of the game is to find Billy and there he is behind the yellow door. What I do with this one is I set up a few different games and use it to warm up the class. To do this, you right click on the slide with the doors at slide two and click duplicate slide. Then you find a yellow door, right click and click send to back. Move Billy over to a different door. The brown door, the blue door, the green door, the red door, the white door, the purple door, put him behind the purple door this time. And right click on the yellow door again and click bring to front. And there he is behind the purple door. You can duplicate and change this as many times as needed. Four to five times will usually last a few minutes and it's a perfect warmer for a class of any age. The next slide down on slide three is a similar game to this, but this time we have to find Sally and all the doors are labeled with names of rooms in the house. So first we find Sally, there she is behind kitchen door number one. We right click, click send to back. That makes Sally come to the front and move her behind whichever door we want. So we'll put her in the living room, right click on the kitchen door again and bring to front. And there is Sally in the living room. And we can also change the names of the rooms by clicking on the text boxes and typing in a new room, the study. And you get the students who ask questions like, is Sally in the blue bedroom? Or is Sally in the TV room? Yes or no. And you click it, yes or no. The team that finds it gets some lovely points. The next slide is a classic game of guess who. And when you click the person's face, they disappear. So let's click Lucy. She's gone. No editing necessary here, so it's a case of copy and pasting this into your usual PowerPoints. And the way you play this is you choose a name, but don't tell the students what it is. And the students have to ask questions to try and figure out who you are talking about. So teach them questions like, are they a man or a woman? Are they wearing a hat? Do they have brown hair? After each question, I choose one student to come up and eliminate all the people who they know it can't be. For example, do they have blonde hair? No. So we eliminate everybody with blonde hair. Lisa, Kevin, Mike, Anna, Sarah. Now they can ask, do they have a mustache? Yes, they do. So we can eliminate Maria, Lucy, Luke, Alice, Martin, Frank, David, Rita, Greg, Robert, and continue until they figure out who it is I'm talking about. Do they have white hair? Yes. Carl, Paul, Scott, Mark. Do they wear glasses? No. Is it John? Yes, it's John. Pretty sure everyone has played Guess Who at some point in their life. And if you want to play more than one game, you can simply just right click and duplicate the slide. So three down and still plenty to go. This next one is really simple. It's a number reveal. And if you click a number, it reveals a picture. It's on slide six. So to edit this, you hold shift and click all the boxes. Right click and send them to the back. This will reveal all the pictures and you can change each one by right clicking and changing picture from a file or from online sources using Bing. And then to put them back, you hold shift, click all the pictures again and right click, 
send them to the back. So when you play the game, click six, it's a horse. Seven, it's a bike. Two, it's a hamburger. Slide seven is just another variation of that, but this time we're using GIFs instead of boxes. So send it to the back to find the picture. Right click, change picture from file or online sources. We've got a hot dog there. I want to change that to a pizza. And there we go, it's a pizza. Right click, send it to the back again. And now number six is a pizza. On slide eight and nine, we have a similar game. Only this time you'll have to prepare your own questions. No need to edit here again. The first slide explains all the rules and the next slide is the board itself. Like the earlier slides, you choose a number and it reveals a picture. If you get a bomb, then you lose a heart. If you get a heart, then you get a free heart. If you get a monster, you have to answer some questions. If you answer the questions right, you get free hearts. And if you get a tornado, you also have to answer some questions, only this time you will get five hearts if you answer all the questions correctly. This one will require you to have some other resources and questions readily available. Another great warm up or end of lesson game for you there. Slide 10 is a big wheel that you can use to distribute points randomly. You click the big button to spin the wheel. And wherever it stops is how many points you give. And at the side, we've got a little active X box where you can fill it in. So team one will get four points. Spin the wheel again. Team two will get seven points and you just use your keyboard to insert the points. If you've only got two teams, you just simply ignore the other boxes. So team one now gets one point. Let's change that to five because five, four plus one equals five. Let's see how good I am at maths. And team two gets four. So seven plus four is 11. Team two now has 11 points. Slide 11 is a brilliant slide for teaching appearance. You can give the students a description and ask them to choose the right parts to make up the face. For example, brown hair, blue eyes, ears like a rabbit, a big nose, and a small mouth. And you can tell the students the descriptions and bring them up to click all the right parts. If they get it wrong, don't worry, you can remove it by clicking on the part again. So the brown hair, we'll remove that. We'll remove the ears and change them for big ears. We'll remove the blue eyes for the green eyes. And we'll move, remove the big nose for a red nose. And then you click all the parts that are on the face to remove them and start again. You can edit this by changing the pictures, but it's pretty nice as it is. And you have to make sure that if you change one of the pictures here, that you use the same picture for the button. Slide 12 is great for teaching how to order food or doing restaurant role play. You get the students to role play as waiter and customer. May I take your order please? Yes, I'll have a pizza, a salad and a cola. Click the pizza and the pizza appears. Would you like anything else sir? Oh, I'd have an apple pie with milk and a hot dog, fries and a cola. That'll be um, $25 please. That's embarrassing. Cut that out, so I did that really quick. Let me $25, please. And you can remove the pictures by clicking on the words again. So the hot dogs disappeared, the apple pies disappeared. Let's add some noodles and a hamburger and a pizza. You can change the pictures, but you have to make sure that the buttons match the pictures. So if you change the hot dog on the left, you must change the hot dog on the right. Slide 13 is another version of slide 12. You can change the pictures, but you have to make sure that the buttons match the pictures. So if you change the hot dog on the left, you have to change the picture of the hot dog on the right. And he uses this in a similar way to teach children how to order food or to role play working at a snack bar. May I take your order, please? Yes, I'll have a hamburger. Would you like a combo? Yes, I'd like a small drink and an apple pie. That'll be $8, please. Thank you very much. And the final slide is a fruit shop that you can, again, use to play shopkeeper. So you, you click the apples. It drops the apples in. How many apples would you like? And you can use this little spin wheel by clicking the arrow here to decide how many apples you would like. I'd like four apples, please. That will be four UM. And the final slide is the fruit shop again, only this time it is using SpongeBob SquarePants as a sort of reskin. And that's everything for today. If you made it this far, then thank you. Hope this is as useful to you as it has been to me. If you use it, then please let me know by dropping a comment down below. If you want to see more TEFL videos, then consider subscribing to this channel. Check out my other content. I'll be dropping at least one new video every Tuesday. If you have any resources or games or TEFL advice, then please feel free to email me at tefltuesdays at gmail.com and I'll probably feature you in a future video. Drop a cheeky like if this has been helpful or a dislike if it hasn't. Stay tuned for more videos and remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do.